सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली फॉर कटक लेटर दिस वन इज थर्टीन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ दैट इज वन probably the first time that one story has featured in all five episodes across a week now there is a lot happening in india elections are coming up parties are declaring their candidates election commission has announced the dates for state elections which are coming up now so it's not as if we don't have the choice of other news but the israel palestine middle east story is so big it is dominating not just the global news cycle but also the indian news cycle it's also very important and that's why we have stuck with this story it's also a story of which on which we don't see that much coverage in indian media and frankly truth to tell if you see a lot that comes up on our tv that's really that's really still entertainment being passed on as as live reporting so there is there is some degree of need and some some degree of hunger in fact a great de- degree of hunger for better information and understanding from facts because when it comes to clutter this is among the most cluttered regions in the world that said what is it that we are talking about today today we are looking at the key organizations you can call them key extremist organizations some of those are described and listed by many uh, by many global powers as terrorist organizations many are supported by other countries in fact most are supported by other countries who do not consider them to be terrorist organizations but freedom fighting organizations nevertheless these organizations feature in the larger israel middle east story so i will just go over each one of these sort of not in a particular order of listing i will just tell you which ones are these hamas which is currently in news big time what is hamas who are the leaders fatah as part of fateh we also have linked to fateh we also have palestinian authority and palestinian liberation organization then there is hezbollah the shiite party the shiite group and palestinian islamic jihad so we go over these in a little bit of detail for our better understanding which is the spirit of cut the clutter and i will share some articles with you some links with you which you can read if you want to if you want to understand these better in greater detail or maybe if you are preparing for the upsc or something right now i am giving you a gist as per my understanding so first of all first of all what do these organizations what kind of a cocktail have they now tossed up in this region so i quote from paul salem who's president and ceo of middle eastern institute who says that other countries like Syria and Lebanon those countries need watching because this war can spill over into those countries from Israel from Israel and the Palestinian regions that is that is the Hamas area Gaza maybe the west bank something or the other goes on there all the time but those are chut put incidents leading to loss of life but maybe it can also spill over into other sovereign countries in the, in the neighborhood namely Syria and Jordan Then he says, and I quote from him: "Strategically, Hezbollah's function is to remain as a deterrent for Iran to dissuade Israel or the U.S. from carrying out any direct action against Iran. So, for Iran, the Hezbollah and the power it wields and the strength it has in Lebanon, next to the borders of northern borders of Israel, their presence." is needed there so that if the americans or the israelis want to take any direct action against iran they can retaliate right there they can build up pressure right there and hezbollah is a very strong organization we'll talk about this and then he goes on to say they don't iranians don't want the deterrent wasted right so they don't want the deterrent wasted means they don't want hezbollah to get involved in the fighting right now israel also does not want a second front opened he says that is paul selem president and ceo of middle middle, middle eastern institute then the fact is that from all the reading that you can get on the middle east you will know and it's very simple because numbers are there that 
Hezbollah actually is a much stronger and much bigger organization than Hamas. It's also much better armed. It's in another country. It, it controls almost the entire South Lebanon. Lebanon is a poorly governed country with a very divided government. So it controls. It has a territory of its own in a sovereign country. It also has a connection to its patron Iran. In fact, it's a land connection because Iran can bring armaments and ammunition into Syria, truck it, bring it in convoys across Syria into the Lebanese territory controlled by Hezbollah. So Hezbollah is much, much stronger than Hamas because I heard Farid Zakaria say in an interview that if Hamas fired 5,000 rockets at Israel, Hezbollah has 150,000 rockets because they have a lot more, they have direct access to Iranian supplies. Now, 5,000 rockets fired so quickly nearly overwhelmed the Iron Dome system because many broke through and caused damage. What will happen if Hezbollah also starts firing its own arsenal and if they do it as Hamas is also doing it, that will be very tough even for the Israeli military. That's why the Israelis don't want to fight Hezbollah now. They don't, don't want to open that second front. And I have also explained to you why it may not be in Iran's interest right now to get Hezbollah involved because Hezbollah is their hedge. Hezbollah is their deterrent against a direct American or Israeli action against their mainland. Now, what is Hezbollah? Hezbollah, that's the one we'll talk about first. Hezbollah is a Shiite purely Shiite organization, unlike Hamas, which is Sunni. Hezbollah is a Shiite organization. It's fully backed by Iran and also has also has support from other Shiite militias and countries, the Houthis, for example, in Yemen or some other Yemenis militias, some Iraqi militias. It has some support from there, but basically patronized by Iran. See, watch their reaction to Hamas attacks. They've described Hamas attacks and I quote from their statement, and I quote, decisive response to Israel's continued occupation and message to those seeking normalization. That's very important because who is seeking normalization that they have a problem with? The country seeking, countries seeking norm normalization are countries of the Arabian Peninsula. That is the Gulf, Gulf Arab countries. UAE has already normalized. Bahrain has already normalized. Morocco, Sudan, etc. also are in the, on the picture, but the big, the big daddy there is Saudi Arabia. Israel and Saudi Arabia have been very close to signing a deal and that's got who upset? That's got the Iranians very impatient and that's why you can see in the Hezbollah statement that concern expressed. Now, will they get involved in the fighting in Israel? We don't know for sure, but I can quote the Lebanese foreign minister, that is Abdullah Bohabib, who says that he's been told on good authority by the Hezbollah leaders that they have no intention of getting involved with the fighting right now. So what is Hezbollah? Hezbollah was formed in 1985. You can say 1982, there were some signs of it or some incipient organization came in, but basically in 1985, it came into being in 1985. It's today led by its secretary general, Hassan Nasrullah. It also has a, it has a military wing or a paramilitary wing as they call it, which is called a Jihad Council. It also has a political wing in the Lebanese parliament. So in Lebanese politics, it's a legit political party. That's the important thing to understand for us. And that's why we say the Middle East is so complicated and so cluttered. So what is it that the top leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah said? So Nasrallah said in his statement that the Hamas attack sends a message to the Arab and Islamic world and the international community as a whole that the Palestinian cause is an everlasting one, alive until victory and liberation. Again, again, according to senior members of Hamas and Hezbollah, said, that, said a Wall Street Journal report, Iran helped plan and execute their attack on Israel. Now, Wall Street Journal also claims that Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, that is IRGC officers, had been working closely with Hamas since August on a plan to breach Israel's borders. Iranians, however, deny it. And we've seen reports that suggest that Israeli intelligence says pretty much what the Wall Street Journal story said. Maybe they are the source. But the American intelligence so far says that they don't have a confirmation. They cannot say for sure that Iranians directed these operations. Now, Hezbollah itself denies that it operates from Israeli soil. They say we operate from where we are. 
But Israel has blamed Iran. It has blamed Iran and Israelis have said, and I quote, we know that there were meetings in Syria and, Le and in Lebanon. That is where Hezbollah is located. We know that there were meetings in Syria and in Lebanon with other leaders of the terror armies that surround Israel. So obviously, it's easy to understand that they tried to coordinate the proxies of Iran in our region. They tried to be coordinated as much as possible with Iran. This was said by Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, last Sunday. So that is the story of Hezbollah. Someday, in fact, we might end up doing an entire episode on Hezbollah. Now see the organization in news, Hamas. We've talked about Hamas in the past in detail. In fact, we featured Hamas in a full episode of Cut the Clutter. I reshared it last week, last Sunday. I will again share a link with you. You can check it out. So I will talk briefly about Hamas. Hamas was founded about 30, 40 years ago by Sheikh Ahmed Yassin. He was a Palestinian cleric who then became a cleric in Muslim Brotherhood. So Hamas is linked to this multinational or pan-Islamic nation political group or party called Muslim Brotherhood, which is very right-wing, very conservative, wants Islamic rule. That's the party that came into power in Egypt after Arab Spring. And then the army in, the, in Egypt did not like it because they did not want that kind of Islamization. And that's how they got rid of it and once again installed a military dictator or near dictator in power. Now, what does Hamas stand for? From where does the word Hamas come? This is this is Harkat al Mukawama al Islamia or Islamic resistance movement. Hamas is confined to Gaza. It's confined to Gaza. In 2007, it had expelled the Fateh group, which is the Palestinian group from the West Bank. Their unit in Gaza was expelled by Hamas after Hamas won the local election. Since then, they are the rulers, they are the dictators of Gaza. And they are the ones right now who've launched this war on Israel. This is also a competitive war because they want to show the Palestinians and the Islamic world while the Fateh group or the larger PLO group, which we'll talk about in a minute, while they've been willing to make peace with Israel, it is Hamas that in fact is committed to an enduring and permanent war on Israel. Now linked to Fateh to the extent that they are in the same geography, in the same Gaza area, is also an organization called Palestinian Islamic Jihad. We'll show you the logos of these organizations wherever available. Palestinian Islamic Jihad or PIJ. This is a Sunni Islamist group. This is the second largest Palestinian Islamic militant group that's active in Gaza. Like Hamas, it does not recognize Israel, believed in armed, waging armed war on Israel. It has re received support from Iran and Syria and also Lebanese Hezbollah. But when I say Lebanese Hezbollah, that is another name for Iran. Where they differ from Hamas is that Hamas fought elections to form a government in Gaza. PIJ does not believe in forming any government. PIJ also, like Hamas, refuses a two-state solution. They want a one-state solution. If Netanyahu's one-state solution is that only Israel should exist, PIJ's and Hamas's one-state solution is that only the Palestinian state should ex exist. So Israel should disappear. It also has an armed wing. PIJ has an armed wing which is called Al-Quds Brigades. These were formed in 1992. This organization is heavily influenced by Iranian revolution. Al-Quds, as you might know by now, is the name of the Muslim holy places in East Jerusalem. Sometimes, but not always, PIJ works in conjunction, in coordination with Hamas. It maintains offices in Syria and, no surprises, Tehran. It was designated as a foreign terrorist organization by the US as far back as in 1997, its leader is Ziad al-Nakala, who himself was declared a specially designated global terrorist in 2014. But with Hamas, they are like a younger sibling. Hamas is the dominant force in Gaza. Now look at some of the other organizations. And these three, in a way, are linked. That is Fateh, Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO. And also, and also Palestinian Authority. So Palestinian Liberation Organization now is like a confederated entity in which many groups participate. The largest of these groups is the Fateh Party. So what is PLO today? PLO is an umbrella organization, includes multiple parties as I just explained to you. It also represents Palestine in the United Nations. It also has some kind of an armed force, PLA, in this case, Palestinian Liberation Army. Don't confuse it with Chinese PLA. 
it is like a like a military branch of the plo but right now not that active not carrying out a lot of military activity now fateh is its largest constituent from where does that name fateh come so fateh is the reverse acronym for arabic translation so the arabic name is harkat al tahrir al watni al filistani this is translated in english as palestinian national liberation movement now fateh fateh is the reversed acronym of the arabic name as we know arabic is written from right to the left so that is the fateh party fateh party was founded in 1959 by palestinian diaspora activists because palestinians had been scattered all over the place these activists included late yasser arafat and the current president of palestinian authority that's mahmoud abbas this was after the 1948 catastrophe or nakba as it's called in the local traditions initially this initially the group opposed israel used guerrilla warfare but ultimately renounced terrorism a lot of the movies that you see set in the 70s 60s maybe some in the 80s also the fighters the arab fighters palestinian fighters they feature are fighters from PLO so they were called a terrorist organization now in 1988 after the statement from yasser arafat this organization like plo recognizes israel it recognizes israel but wants wants the borders of pre 1967 israel restored in 1967 war it is that in six in, in the six day war israel defeated three arab armies three larger arab armies that is egypt Syria and Jordan and gained territory which was four times its original size. This party recognizes Israel but wants Israel to be reduced to where it was before the Six Day War in 1967. That we know is not going to happen. But these negotiations go on. This party also, this party, the PLO, the whole lot signed a whole bunch of accords with the Israelis in 1990s, early 1990s, called Oslo Accords in Norway. in oslo accords there was proposal of a two state solution and that's why they recognized israel that is something that netanyahu and his government have now gone back on fateh as part of plo now rules the west bank and the government is headquartered at ramallah and finally again this is not a party that's a combatant but that's a party which is central to what's happening in the middle east which which is central to what's happening between israel and the palestinians because they have the most support the votes the credibility that's the palestinian authority palestinian authority came into being in 1994 after secret negotiations between plo and the israeli government in norway in 1993 i told you that's when the oslo accords were signed in norway in 1996 arafat Yasser Arafat of the Fateh party was elected president of Palestinian Authority he was succeeded by Mahmoud Abbas who as we told you just now was a co-founder with him of of Fateh in 1959 so now Palestinian Authority was set up as a kind of provisional government until until Palestine got a full state autonomous sovereign status that hasn't happened and impression is grown that remain too much much too much under israeli influence and that is something that hamas has done nothing to discourage because hamas wants to hamas would have thought even before they launched these attacks these spectacular attacks that these will burnish their credentials to be the only true leaders of the palestinians so that is where the tussle is i thought it's very very i thought it's very interesting and very important that we talk about these organizations who are central to what's happening and before i let you go let me also give credit where it's due very often you ask me who's your research team who researches for you so there are there are my colleagues in my office so every now and then pitch in and help now for a lot of our geopolitical episodes the person who deserves credit most of all is a young person in fact a school student in seattle shreya shankar through this week and also going back some more time for our geopolitical episodes Shreya is a person I need to thank.